Hello everybody, this is Brad Dyke. Wanted to come to you and talk a little bit about 10 gig networks for the little guy. 10 gig networks that are designed to give you an awesome capacity within your test labs so that you can work on the platform of 10 gigabit tried and true as far as 10 gigabit TCP IP will give you. So today I give you the Microtech Series 9 port CRS 309-1 gig dash BS series switch. Now, this switch is pretty awesome. Uh, obviously, as you can see here, it has the 10 gig outputs and they are GBIC ready. Now, just for those who are wondering, a GBIC is basically a type of interface that can do fiber and or it could do copper and or could be doing other variations that are too numerous to talk about. But I'll give you one other example. Just give me one second. In the realm of 10 gigabit bandwidth, there are also other ways of twin Xing out your GBIC interfaces copper to copper and give you the bandwidth which you need in regards to working with storage arrays and so on. So the key thing here is we're working with a Microtech, which I suspect may be Czechoslovakian, may be another country in the old Baltic states, uh, but I'm impressed with its design. There's the very first thing that impresses me. I am not a fan of active cooling. I believe that if you can get your technology down right, even if it requires an investment, go passive cooling, because that just means your gear is better. And as you can see here, I have quite a few 10 gig ports along with my 1 gig interface for my PED or I, or I could do serial if I want to. I've done it both ways. I kind of enjoy using copper uh, for management and handling. This switch actually comes with a couple of other components that are very nice. You have your kit for rack mounting so that way you'll be able to put it into a standard 19 inch rack kit. It will come with two components, your short bracket, your long bracket, your power supply. Now, I was telling you about using copper, and I wasn't kidding. This particular class, GBIC, allows you to put 6A standard or 10 gig compatible cabling for copper. And as you can see here, let me give you the the 10 gig FSP-T-CI, which deals with, yep, RJ45, copper. Nice, it's got a pretty, I like the gold tone on the front. This goes right into the unit itself as well. And to give you some understanding of what I'm talking about, I work with these things quite a bit. And one of the key details in this in this particular process, you've got to realize when dealing with this kind of switching technology with Microtech, right there is the brand name, is that you have to understand where this particular design came from. And meet Grandpa. This is the four, pit, four port version, which came out about a year or so ago before the, the other one. And as you can see, again, it's a CR5305-1G slash 4S-IN, which means basically I have one copper 1 gig and four 10 gig GBIC ready interfaces. And they still use the same interfaces. And they're interchangeable. And there's a whole variety. Can you run one gig fiber only on this? Absolutely. You run downhill, and all you have to do is to meet the spec specification requirements of the actual GBIC itself. There is an image of it for you. It's the 850 nanometer style. Multi mode is fine, you can do that too. Single mode works as well. It's not as good, so you have to be kind of cautious. Do a little research on it. But as I said, this unit worked really nicely. But obviously, because I didn't have the actual component size and the amount of connectivity I needed, I needed to find something bigger, and I did. 
Stand by here for a second while I get this prepped and I will be right back. Okay, so now what we've done is we can now start talking about why do you need one of these platforms? What is the value of having a 10 gig in your personal lab? What's some of the enterprise values of these chassis? And of course, I'm not going to show you the insides of them because I think those videos have already come out. But when you look in these designs and you see how they function, um, you want to also be able to integrate some of your fairly cheap 10 gig cards, which you can now bring into the equation and transform some of your machines into NAS like devices or NFS devices and to be able to do it for under 250 bucks, that's great. It's gonna let you learn. It's gonna let you grow. When you build environments and you build stuff from scratch and you wanna test it, it's great. If you wanna get into the world of working with high speed environments, that's great because you can. These switches are capable, competent, and functional. And today you can buy hardware on eBay and use them to accomplish what you want. Like right here is my Net, NetApp Fast 3270, which I have powered off right now because it would be too loud for me to talk around it with it powered on. But when you look at stuff like this, and you've got or an EMC recycled product platform or something like that, there's one key detail you gotta remember. To work them and use them correctly, you need two 10 gig pathways, fiber or copper, but for most of the time it's fiber because they weren't working with 10 gig cards that were copper based in that day. So by having both worlds being met by the RJ45 10 gig solution for the server interface side of the equation to your fiber optic 850 nanometer style GBIX, which are perfect for your variations of 1 and 10 gig hookups which are available on your storage platforms. So something else that's important here that which you'll notice exists on the four port right there in the back, there are two power outputs, one on the left and one on the right. That's for redundancy. This little guy, this model doesn't do this yet, but it has the pinouts to do it. If you look in the back, you'll see that down the road when the version two comes out, they'll be able to give you two different power pathways. One could go to a small UPS, the other one can go to straight power, and it would give you the ability of having a really redundant style, well-protected, cheap, cost-effective, 10 gigabit switch. I like this switch. It's a good design. Uh, hats off to Microtech for what they've done. Uh, they need to keep it up. They make it, need to make it more ex accessible. And uh, I'm looking forward to the 16 port. And that leaves us to the last question that which usually gets asked when you pursue this kind of technology. And that is, okay, why do I need eight or more ports? Well, you're going to need two for your interfaces, for your desktop and your server. For my fast 3270 I need four fiber connections and then that only leaves me three to play with if I want to bring on board an isolated NAS or some type of paired storage solution and or if I want to bring more servers into the equation like I want to play with a web platform that has a database in it and databases always need to run faster than your outbound connectivity 10 gigs the way to go so I actually have more than eight ports because I will connect one of the 10 gigs, probably port A to port one, and get three more ports out of that equation so I can do Isilon, NetApp, PairStore, uh, built arrays, HP, and so on, and have the connectivity I need to run the benchmarks I do as a storage architect dealing with enterprise level storage systems and keep me sharp and keep me dealing with the next generation of work. Hope you enjoyed this. I do this because a lot of people out there just don't have the money uh, or understanding yet, but they want to get in the game. They want to learn how to start doing this. They are excited about working with enterprise level equipment. 
Um, and I've been doing it for 29 years, and I'm glad to reach out and help people so that they can be involved. So uh, at this point stage, I'll let you go. God bless, and have a great week.